feels a little like Groundhog Day, the movie. It was at this time yesterday that a friend of ours, Chris Stewart, called in and um, received uh, was on the receiving end of uh, a pretty bad battering. I felt fine while we were doing it because I know our intent. We love Chris Stewart. He is a good friend and a longtime friend and a guy I wanted to work with for a long, long time. Tried to hire him here. We have felt that uh, we, we were concerned about the direction he was going, as along with all people that we really respect in Congress. Yeah, Sense and Brother went that way. Jim Jordan, Trey Gowdy said he would have voted right. for being around. So. And we can't, uh, we just don't understand it. We just don't understand it. Last night, I got home and I watched the interview, again, because Chris is my friend, and I watched the interview, and I felt that's not my best performance. That's not the way I want to, uh, that's not the way I want to be. But I still had good intent while doing it. Um, so I called Chris last night. We haven't spoken. I left a message uh, on the, the phone last night apologizing, um, telling him that, you know, I think he walked into a buzzsaw yesterday. However, I don't apologize for the intent, and I don't apologize for having my opinions. And I don't apologize for believing he is absolutely dead wrong on John Boehner and wrong that we have the facts wrong. We double-checked them yesterday. We are correct. With that being said, Chris Stewart is here because I would like to change the tone. Hello, Chris. How are you? Hey, good morning, Glenn. I want you guys to know I've got on my body armor. I've got on my <laughs> combat gear. You can start slaying away again. I will tell you, I will tell you, you deserve a lot of extra points for having the balls to come on yesterday and then again, again. today. Yeah. No one else no would have done else. that, Chris. No, no one else, else would have done I don't done think that. anyone else has ever, has ever done no. it. No. No, so, Newt Gingrich, for you. Newt Gingrich did it once. My, it's probably against my better judgment, but Glenn, uh, here we are again. So, <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm actually so, glad to be with you. Okay, so Chris, here's the thing: we want you to prove us wrong in, uh, let's say, by June. We'd like to have you back on, where we can say, you know what, Chris, you were right. Great agenda. Great agenda. You guys did it. Because I can't. I don't understand. Uh, there's nothing you can say. We double checked all the facts on on John Boehner and what he's been for and against. And I'm sorry, you're drinking too much Kool Aid. <laughs> I'm sorry, we have the facts right. I you can't convince me that John Boehner is a good guy because a good guy yesterday doesn't do what John Boehner does and get up and start punishing the people who ran against him. Yeah, um, well, that that's I that's guess. Barack Obama. Glenn, I would so, say two things. One is uh, I appreciate the invitation to come back in June. I look forward to that. In fact, I'd love mm -hmm. to come back in January and February and March and do a month-by-month -month recap of what we are going to do because mm -hmm. I think we may not be perfect, uh, and, you, and you may not be entirely satisfied, but I think you and your listeners, by and large, are going to see things begin to move now. And, and I told someone the other night, you know, the, the worst-case scenario over the next two years is far better than anything that we've lived through in the last two years. Uh, because we've had Harry Reid, who has who has jammed every piece of legislation that we've tried to do, and we're going to get past that now. We've got friends in the Senate, uh, and the second thing is to your point about uh, uh, John and, and retribution. I, I I agree with that. I said to the speaker that I and I would say this to others: we're better united than we are when we attack each other. And could I could I just mm -hmm. say quickly, as a former military guy, you I, I mean it's just in my DNA that you stand by your brothers. You may not like them. You may be, they may be different. You may have different opinions. But in a war, you stand by your brothers, and we are in a war. We're, we're in a, a fight for the heart and soul of our country. And I, and I don't think that it's well, see, for that's, a speaker to divide or to, uh, yeah. or to that's if, the, if he is you know, uh, attributing retribution against him. I, I certainly don't agree with that. Well, that, that, is, that is the biggest point, um, uh, Chris, that I think people like you may be missing because you're inside the beltway you don't see the frustration outside the beltway you know elizabeth warren who's one of the most radical people on the planet runs in the democratic party they celebrate they want her to run for president but if you stand by the constitution you're a radical that's trying to destroy america and i can get that from cnn i can get that from msnbc i can get that from barack obama i don't need that from the leadership of the gop yeah. Well, mm -hmm. Glenn, listen, you know my family, and I go home every single weekend. I spend every moment that I can out of D.C. I'm anything but an inside-the-beltway guy. 
Uh, but believe me, when you say that I don't see that or I don't hear that, that's, I mean, believe me, Glenn, I do. I hear it. I see it from my own wife. I hear it from my children. I hear it from my brothers, my sisters, and I hear it from every person that I meet back in the district. I hear it all the time, and I agree with it all the time. Okay, so tell me what the plan is, because I don't understand this vote. So yeah. what is the what is it that they said yesterday that made everybody fall in behind John Boehner? What is the great change that is well, coming that well, John was, Boehner... There was nothing really that was said yesterday. This was a battle that's been going on for, for months. It's really an ongoing battle. Just like every two years, I know that I'm going to be challenged. I know this, is, this seat is not a guarantee to me. That I'm going to be challenged and expect to be challenged every two years. I think the speaker expects to be challenged, and he should be challenged. I support no, that. No, he doesn't uh, expect to be challenged, otherwise he wouldn't be punishing people. But <laughs> well, let's, let's but not focus he, on I that. Think he does. Here, I think any speaker would. They know that there are some people that are going to be unhappy with the way, regardless of who they are. And there were some viable alter, alternative candidates, but none of them stepped forward. Trey Gowdy, for example, he's, he's one of those who, who nominated the speaker in November. And, and I tried to make this point <laughs> yesterday. Uh, Louis Gohmert is a friend of mine, and I have tremendous respect for him. He's one of the most clever and one of the most articulate members of the House, but he is not the person to unite the House. And I think we saw that in the vote yesterday. He only got two votes. And so I, I was, I, uh, that that's had. fine. That's fine. I, I, you could have voted for a cat. Yeah. <laughs> Let, let's, let's please, let's, let's not co concentrate yeah. on this. Yeah. Let's concentrate, please, on what is the plan now. Yes, yeah. and I'm what glad, is the plan? Thank you, Glenn, for asking that because that is the primary thing that I think we should be uh, talking about, and that's what are we can do move forward. And I could talk to you. I, I mean, I've, I'm developing, or we're in the process of working with other people. What we call a 12 and 12 plan: 12 weeks, 12 major pieces of legislation. We start with Keystone, which is very important in, in energy independence and also job creation. We, but we can't go to our summit or move anywhere else beyond next week without coming back to border security. And looking at what we did with defunding amnesty, what the president did with is clearly unconstitutional. That's not a partisan opinion. It's clearly unconstitutional what he did with amnesty. We have to find a way to defund that, and we have to do it early. Uh, we can't wait till till Feb, uh, February or even uh, even late January. I want to move that uh, legislation. But as you, soon but as we you, can. but but you, you, you left on the table the defunding of homeland security. And you gave him everything else. Do you really think this president doesn't want to have that fight? Doesn't want to get on television and say, oh, they defunded Homeland Security? Yeah. I mean, you immediately lose because the American people see the threat of terror and, and he will spin it. You've taken away all other tools except yeah. for Homeland Security. Well, he will spin it. There's no question, and the press will, will back him up on that. And our intention isn't to defund all of Homeland Security. Our intention is to defund every part that deals with his executive amnesty and to fund every other part of Homeland Security, including attaching to that the border security bill that I helped write that is for the first time in a generation truly committed to securing our borders. But I don't think the question is you know, not defunding the entire uh, uh, program or homeland security. Clearly, we want to uh, defend those parts that are or, or fund those parts that are important. As you said, Glenn, you know people understand <coughs> that terrorism is a real threat, but we have to, in my opinion, defund the amnesty part to that. 